Let's walk around the compound. I want to see some cats with some pizza. Cassie squeaks are the best around. I think it's time to walk around the compound. My Malita. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Oh, stressy, stressy, stressy kitty. Who's stressy, 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 stretchy, cranky, stretchy, cranky? Stretchitude. It's when you stretch and it's accompanied by attitude. I don't know what it is, but there was a lot. There was a lot of that. that was, that's one of those things in the 90s attitude we're gonna put some attitude into it hey we're gonna make this show and it's gonna have attitude they like these television commer commercials well but you're gonna like them more with attitude did you know that you could put attitude on some sneakers there's some we'll get some attitude do you like these pretzels pretzel -tude. and <laughs> it's and everything, I don't know, I just, it got to the point where it started to really bug me. It was a thing that, it was a phenomenon that got just put into so much marketing of just everything. Attitude. Hey, we're kids. We're kids with attitude. And then they would like cross their arms. And they'd be like, and put on some sunglasses and be like, yeah. And I'm just like, this sucks. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I just, I guess it's like just seeing it all the time. It, it really did. It annoyed me. It just annoyed me. It's just like, who are you kidding? I don't feel like this has like any attitude at all. This is co-opted attitude. This is fakeitude. Attitude that was put together in some board room by a bunch of suits. <laughs> and it's like there's some things where it it turned out fantastic. There's certain things where it's like okay, it was absolutely appropriate. Like whenever you talk about like WWE's Attitude Era, that's that's mwah, that's that's the best. That's an appropriate usage of it because there's like all right, there's a lot of attitude in this era. <laughs> it feels right. It doesn't feel cringy. That's like the big thing. It just it always felt cringy. Just, ugh. Ugh. The Simpsons captured it best when they had the Poochie. When they, when they had po the character Poochie. <laughs> Always recycle. To the extreme! Oh, it, that was so good. They really, they really... And it was funny because they actually were able to like very successfully satirize that sort of thing. That sort of phenomenon. Like, at the peak of it. Right in the middle. It was, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's like, oh, there's certain kind of like cultural things that may not be satirized until after enough time has kind of elapsed and you can get, like, there's probably different things that happen. Uh, you know, if you have like a movie and then it's a flashback to the 80s. And then there's like just like some kind of silly, funny, like 80s references. That are maybe a little, oh boy. That are a little bit like over the top and kind of satirical. Hi, look at that boy. Oh my gosh, look at him. Look at him. Ah, look at him. Look at him. Very cute. But it's like, okay, this is kind of an over the top satirization of that era. Or of elements of that era 
that maybe the satirical elements would not have been kind of really fully kind of saturated, marinated into the collective consciousness, like right as it was happening, like during that era. Oh, it's one of those things where it's like you might be in, you're in something that you don't know. Oh, this is going to be something that we're going to make fun of. Sometimes it's pretty apparent, and then sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's not always as apparent. Pin, pin, pin. Pin, 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 pin. Pin, 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 pin. Pin, pin, pin. Hi. <laughs> Would you like some ketchup with attitude? I put some jalapenos and some thumbtacks in this ketchup. This has got a lot of attitude. <laughs> Firebug. Firebug. Like whenever we feed, hi, whenever you feed and then you walk around the compound, you get to see a, a lot of kitties with attitude. <laughs> I guess that's the thing, because there's like the difference between like, oh, are you cool or are you, again, are you trying to like, are you trying to co-opt whatever the thing is and you're not letting it happen organically because i'm sure that there's probably some people who you know like yeah they they would have been like you know considered like ah here's the cool the cool people you know the zach morris's and the ac sliders of their day and they didn't have to necessarily declare hey you know what I got, I got some attitude. It, they just lived it. They just, they had it. So I guess that's one of the things where you have to like sit there and declare it. Anyone who declares himself as having attitude is not deserving of the title. Like someone who says, it's like, I'm cool. If you have to sit there and say, I'm very cool. Are you? Are you? Cool people just know. James Dean, just he just was it. He just was. Just was. And he, he just let other people kind of define his whole thing. Whoa. Do you think that Marlon Brando, like, just basically said, like, I'm redefining act, I'm re what is I'm, re I'm redefining act. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Stella, <laughs> I'm on I don't know, it went off where he can't pass up. Think, think that Elvis, like, had to like hold a press conference and be like, "Hey, everyone, by the way." I'm the king. <laughs> Do you think that James Brown went out of his way to tell people that he was the hardest working man in show business? Although he was, a, I would actually say that he probably like very carefully constructed that image. Like when you see like all the different things that James Brown did to like very carefully curate his music and his image and like his performances, you're just like, all right. 
Like, if he gave himself the title of the hardest working man in showbiz, that's fine. It Like, it's deserved. <laughs> he ran a tight, like, he ran a super tight ship when it came to performing. I guess he would like, he would find his band member. He would like keep a running tally of like people in his, in his band, in his live shows. And he would be able to like tell if they, uh, if like they hit a note that was like flat. And then he would find them per occurrence. And it's like, sorry, Jerry, you like, you were supposed to hit a B sharp and you just hit a regular B, so that's 50 bucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. And he would be, and he would keep track. He would keep track of it. Like, while the performance was happening, while he himself was performing. And then he would, like, I guess, like, send signals to, like, one of his, like, stage manager. One of his stage managers who was, like, able to then write, like, things down. It was, yeah, I heard, I'm just like, holy crap. <laughs> that's but that's what I've heard. I don't I don't know if like how true that is, but it sounds like something that is true. That sounds like something part of the mythos of James Brown. These boys were being pretty good. <gasps> no. I was having good reactions or interactions. Interreactions. Mm. Hello. Hi boys. <gasps> Rah, we were having we were having sweetness. We were having Whoa. 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 Why do we gotta be like this? What? I went in when I was going into the uh, the lower section of uh, of the building. Um, I was uh, conducting uh, some clue-related business for the scavenger hunt. Clue-related business in the lower section. Um, and uh, Zuby came in. And it was a to-do. Meaning like, he, cause Zuby was just like, hi, he's asleep. And like Zuby was being like really quiet, He's like hello, and I was like, oh, I was giving them love and smooches and kisses and scratches through the fence and stuff like that. Hello, and uh, yeah, it was nice. It was nice to be able to interact with Zuby with without being you no know, emperor. Ralpatine, Ralpatine. I am the babies. Oh, there we go. Capture, 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 capture. Got uh, road base, but it's like it's not it's not like gravelly road base. I mean, technically it is, but it's like like you know much more kind of compacted, fine um, type stuff. So that stuff, like it, when it gets kind of when it gets pushed down, pressed down, rained on, it does kind of it firms up a lot more. But then you can also put like cushion sand on top of it. So certain sections of the uh, enclosures that. Um, they just, you know, they get, they get kind of dipped out, washed out, peated out. A lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of peat dips. Um. We're able to kind of go in and. 
Hi. Filling that. I mean, bleh. gross. Gross. What do you want? What do you want? Blah. Who cares? Beep. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, look at dum dum. He's looking over his other shoulder. He's like, oh, it's over there. Yeah. See how easy you are to trick? You're so gullible. You're so trickable. Because your brain works at a trickle. Get it? And you're gullible. Because instead of, it's like a gully where it should be less, not so much of a, a washed out space. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, years of, years of trickling thoughts have caused a gully <laughs> inside of your brain. <laughs> Uh, I think it's still in there. Uh, uh, it was like a bug. It was like a little bug flew right into my throat. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, uh, it tastes actually kind of lemony. <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, someone's gonna put it in the comment section like, "Oh, that means that means that that bug's probably poisonous." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, good. Oh, jeepers! They're falling over." What do you want? Yeah, you didn't help. Yeah, you didn't help me at all. I was struggling. Yeah. Yeah. You're dumb. You're dumb, dumb, dumb. I mean, that thing, that thing kamikaze right into my uvula. I, oh boy. Hi. Blech. Yeah. Ezra. Ezra. Ezra too. Oh my gosh. You know how perfect you are. Do you just know? Do you know? Do you even know? I don't think you do. See, that's the other thing. Ezra is one of those guys. He's kind of like one of the guys I was talking about. He doesn't have to sit there and say like, hey, I'm cool and cute and quirky and just fun and overall just a general, just great guy to be around. He just is those things. He's a kitty with attitude. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that you're on stinks. You got trickle brain and you got stinks brain over here. Ah, there we go. It's nice when they're all in the same spot. Because uh, then you don't have to waste so much film. You know, that's, uh, that's one of those kind of things where it's like... Kind of a, like, it's... Oh, when I, and I say 
use the word, but it's, may, I should say it's like, oh, it's kind of a bummer or it's kind of sad. I was about to use the word tragedy. It's not a tragedy. <laughs> there's like, there's a lot of things that could be classified as tragedies. What I'm about to describe, I don't think maybe he is, but there's a lot of, um, like old, uh, old television shows, like way back in the day, like some of the very first, like, uh, late night show kind of concepts back in like the, like Jack Parr, when they were just like formulating that stuff or like early episodes of like some of these more classic TV shows, um, they, uh, whoa, 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 they would, uh, they would film them for broadcast and a lot of times just to save money, they would just, they would just reuse the film. They would reuse the originals of a lot of these things, of a lot of these shows, not ever thinking or conceptualizing. Cause why would you, I mean, really even think about it, like why? If it's not even a, like a concept that you could like even think to consider the notion of like, oh, like having a historical record or the, even the notion of reruns, it wasn't, the, it, it wasn't a thing in the very, very early days. So they'd be like, yeah, we're just making this stuff. We're just doing these kind of things. And then they would, they'd be like, oh, well, just to save money, let's go ahead and just go and get some of like, you know, the the film that we shot a few years ago and then just reuse it and it's like some of the some of that stuff is gone forever forever <laughs> forever hey you I can't remember which shows were like that, but I think it's like a few where like you'd hear about it and you'd be like, oh man, that would have been really interesting to see some of those earlier. Maybe even like early like Carson stuff. Hi. Whoa. Crinkle nose. Crinkle nose. Crinkle nose cranky pants. You know what they say, crinkly nose, smooth heart. At least I think that's how the saying goes. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of the Walker on the Compound webcast. Hashtag Dorbus to warn in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. For all of your big cat goodness, and if you want to learn more about the facility around me, you can always visit the website carerescuetexas.com for more information. Shout out to my extra fancy patrons. You keep them tigers fed, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.